you feel tight in your hamstrings, lower back, upper shoulders and neck, so you keep on stretching all the time and it works for a few minutes, but it doesn't solve the problem long term. Why are you so tight all the time? Is stretching perhaps the wrong approach? That's exactly what we'll discuss in this video. So what are the most common reasons why people stretch? Reason number one is that they just feel tight. There's just a sub subjective sensation of tightness. The other common reason is that they have an injury and they assume that stretching will make it better. We'll talk about why both of those may not be the best reasons to stretch and when is it appropriate to stretch, for how long, how many times per week, etc. In my experience as a personal trainer, when somebody complains of the subjective sensation of tightness, I always think is this subjective or can this be verified with objective range of motion testing. So I test the range of motion wherever they feel tight. So if they feel tight on their hamstrings, I check their hamstrings range of motion. If they feel tight in the neck, I check neck range of motion. And very rarely do I see a strong relationship between subjective feelings of tightness and objective range of motion deficits. It's interesting that they feel a certain tightness and yet there's nothing to back it up objectively speaking. Why might that be? What I found is that usually if somebody has that, a neighboring muscle is weak. For instance, if the hamstrings feel tight, usually the glutes are not doing their job. The glutes are weak. So the hamstrings feel tight because they are doing the job of both their own function, the hamstrings, but they're also trying to do the function of the glutes. Of course, they're not as good as doing the function of the glutes as the glutes are, so they're working double time. The same is true for other areas where people feel subjectively tight without objective deficits in range of motion. And interestingly enough, once you identify the weak muscles and you strengthen those over a period of just a couple weeks, the tightness starts to go away. That subjective sensation goes away entirely. The other common reason why people stretch is to reduce the risk of injury. But here's something interesting. Stretching doesn't really reduce the risk of injury all that much. In one meta-analysis, researchers compared the different interventions for injury prevention. One intervention was stretching, another one was strength training, and a third one was proprioceptive exercises. These are exercises that improve your ability to tell where your body is in space. So for example, there's something called angle reproduction, where a training partner bends your knee while you're standing or lying down, and you're not looking at what's the angle of the bend and you try to replicate that yourself. That's an example of a proprioceptive exercise. At the end of those studies, what they found is that stretching reduces the risk of injury by only about 4%. Strength training reduces by about 68% and proprioceptive exercise reduces the risk of injury by about 45%. So there's a minimal to no impact of stretching on injury risk. So it doesn't actually help tightness long-term anyways, and it doesn't help injury risk reduction. Does that mean that nobody should stretch? Well, no, that's not the case. Stretching has its time and place, it's just overrated. When I say overrated, I don't mean useless. We have to distinguish those two terms. Overrated means that it's being attributed a superiority that it doesn't have. It's being attributed benefits that it doesn't have. And so there is a time and a place for stretching. When is that time and place? Well, when we've tested objective range of motion and there are indeed deficits, this is the time and place for stretching. That's a great time to stretch. Another time when it makes sense to do stretching is a different kind of stretching called dynamic stretching. When we stretch, we often think of it as static stretching. That is before an activity, you put your leg up onto a raised platform and you reach for your leg, for your foot. However, that doesn't really prepare you very well for dynamic activity. Dynamic stretching by contrast is what you often see people like sprinters, dancers, runners, martial artists doing before they prepare for the activity. Dynamic stretching prepares you for dynamic activity. Static stretching does not prepare you for dynamic activity. So that's another good time to stretch to actually improve your performance, not worsen your performance. Another time to stretch is if the demands of a person's activity require more than just normal range of motion. For example, gymnasts, divers, etc. normal range of motion is not good enough, but it's not for health, it's for performance. So these are three times when stretching makes sense, when stretching is not overrated, when you need to stretch in order to perform your activity and do it safely. Now, just as there is a time to stretch, there's a time to avoid stretching. There is something called the Baton test for hypermobility, and it's five different simple tests to help you identify, are you hypermobile to begin with? One of those tests is elbow extension. You see how far you can extend your elbow, and in some people, the forearm actually goes down. That's not me, so I can't demonstrate it. Another part of the Baton hypermobility test is trying to bring your index finger back and see how far back it can go. If it can go past 90 degrees, that's hypermobility in this joint. A third test is trying to touch your thumb to the forearm. I can't do it, so I'm not going to demonstrate it. And another test is trying to straighten your knee and see if your knee goes past 180 degrees. And the last test of the Baton hypermobility test is trying to touch your palms to the ground without bending your knees. 
If you can do that without warming up, and if you have three or more out of the five tests, you are hypermobile, somebody like you should never stretch. And the great irony is that people who have hypermobility actually gravitate towards stretching. They love yoga classes, stretching in general, etc. And yet these are the people who also feel tight all the time. The irony is they actually, for them, improving range of motion actually means decreasing range of motion, not increasing range of motion. These are the people who should never stretch. Now let's say you've identified that you are one of those people who would benefit from stretching. How should you do it? You want your stretching to have semi-permanent effects. You don't want to have to stretch every few hours just to maintain rich emotion. You want to stretch a few times and then that progress holds for a very long time. One way to do that is with a type of stretching called PNF. That is proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. And the way that's done, another name for it, is called contract relax stretching. You or a training partner take the target muscle close to its end range to the point where you feel a mild stretch, maybe three or four out of 10. In that position, you contract the muscle with about 80% force for six to 10 seconds. And as you relax, you or your training partner pushes that muscle to a slightly greater length, maybe another five, 10 degrees until you feel a new level of stretch. If you do it this way, you'll be able to maintain your flexibility improvements a lot longer. Generally speaking, from about one to six sessions of stretching in this way, you can have semi-permanent improvements in your flexibility. After you've done that, there's no need to continue stretching for greater and greater and greater flexibility. There's a point at which enough is enough. Once you've normalized range of motion, more is not better unless you're an athlete in one of the sports where you actually require greater flexibility than just normal. To maintain your flexibility after you've normalized it, you don't need to do it two, three, four times per week anymore. You might only need to do it once every month to every six months. So it doesn't really take a long time or a lot of effort to maintain once you've already made it. And it only takes one to six sessions to really to normalize your range of motion. If you enjoy this video, I have a newsletter with lots more information just like this. It's in the link below. And if you click on that, you'll be able to subscribe to the newsletter and you'll always have the opportunity to unsubscribe.